Hello, welcome to Free Maths Lessons. Today we're going to be looking at June 2023 Paper 2 Foundation. Uh, these are practice papers set 2 and these are designed to help you with your June 2023 exams. These Again, this is a Paper 2 Foundation and AQA exam boards. So without delay, let's get started. So the first question is 10% of 50. Again, this is a calculator paper. So make sure you're using a calculator have calculator at hand so and use the calculator that you normally use okay so you know all the buttons how to work out the percentage uh, how to use fractions how to use brackets square roots square cubes all the different functions that you calculate can do so you know how to use them again every calculator have a different lay button layout so i'm not going to go through what buttons you need to press because every calculator have slightly different button layout so if you don't have a percentage button in your calculator and you want to use calculator how to work out i would write 10 percent as a fraction and you can use that and work out so 10 percent is 10 out of 100 or you can write it as a 0 0.1 okay. and then if you know percentage is 10 percent is 0 0.1 we multiply it by 50 and you can use calculator to do that or you can do it without calculator it would be five so the answer to the first question would be five work out three square again there's a square button in the calculator all you have to do is a three and press square button and if you don't know what square button is in your calculator or if you don't have the square button we're going to use three times three and that will give you nine as our answer Right, okay, so we're going to look at question three, which is saying write down the probability of rolling five on an ordinary fair dice. Fair dice means every single side have exactly the same chance of getting landed. Okay, so landed on, there are six sides on the fair dice and every single side will have exactly the same chance of getting it. Okay, And how many of those sides has five written on it? So only if it's a fair dice, then only one side have a five written on it. So probability of getting five on a fair dice it would be one out of six uh, question four we want to work out the cost of 30 pence so it's a proportion problem so we got what we're going to do is going to write down number of pens and on the right hand side we're going to write down the cost so 12 pen will cost you two pound and 40p so we're going to use unitary method so work out the cost of one pen so if you're going from 12 to 1 we're dividing it by 12 so i need to divide the other side by 12 as well and that will give you saying one pen will cost you 0.2 pound or 20p so if you're using 20p make sure you convert it back into pound at the end but we're just going to use 0.2 because again it's a calculator paper and you are allowed to use calculator so i don't need to change anything to make the calculation easier so multiply the left hand side by 30 to get the cost of 30 pence and multiply 0 0.2 by 30 and you will get six pounds and that's three marks so if you as soon as you work out the cost of one pen that'll get you one mark and then obviously if you or if anything's seen like saying okay to you need to divide it by 12 and then multiply multiply by 30 you would get those full marks as long as you have the correct units at the end Solving equation 4x plus 1 equal to 39. So we're looking for is saying, okay, four lots of something plus 1 will give you 39 on the right hand side. So that four lots of something has to be equal to 38. Why? Because 38 add 1 will give you 39. But if you're using the proper method, we're going to take away 1 from both sides. Why? Because the opposite of add 1 is take away 1. So add 1 and take away 1 will give you 0. So you're left with 4x on the left hand side and 39 take away 1, which is 38. So you're left with 38 on right hand side. So now what you need to do is saying 4 of the same thing will give you 38. So if you want to work out what one of those things going to be, we need to divide both sides by 4. So 4x divided by 4 will give you one of those same thing. Okay? And 38 divided by 4 
you can leave your answer as 38 over 4 and you still get full by with but just in case we're going to simplify it okay so saying how many four goes into 38 we say nine whole one and two quarter left over now nine whole one you can't do anything but we can simplify two quarter as a half so x has to be nine and a half which is same as 9.5 you can write your answer as a decimal or nine and a half so i wouldn't want to change it into decimal i'll just leave it as a nine and a half and that would be your answer again you can check the answer by putting nine and a half in uh, our equation what we started with and you should get 39 so nine and a half times four will give you 38 38 add one will give you 39 so that is correct answer Here's the list of numbers we need to work out what mode is of these in a list of numbers now mode is most common means one that appears most so if i look at it, every single number appears once except the four four appear twice so four is our mode most common work out the mean mean is when you add all the numbers up and divide by how many there are Again, it's a calculator paper, so I wouldn't expect you to add it in your head, but if you can, you can do it quicker. Okay, so I'm going to add all of these numbers together. And then they add up to 50. So all these eight numbers add up to 50, so I need to divide it by eight. Why? Because there are eight numbers there. So 50 divided by eight, that'll give me 6.25, and that would be your mean. Question 7. Sam spends exactly £40 on petrol. So we got £40 here. And the uh, cost of the petrol is 1.75 per litre. So what we need to do is divide it by 1.75 to work out the co how many litres did we buy. Because we buy £40. We didn't really check how many litres we bought. But we knew the price which was £1.75p. So when you do that in the calculator. Excuse me. Uh, you would get 22.857 and more decimal places. But we're just interested in uh, first decimal place. Why? Because it's telling you in the question here, give your answer to one decimal place. So if you don't give your answer to one decimal place, you lose one mark even though you worked here. So you get one mark for writing this just calculation down, 40 divided by 1.75, and another mark writing the answer down. Now you get the last mark for rounding it to two, one decimal place, which is 22.9. If you're rounding it at one decimal place, you're saying this number after that is 5. So we round it up to 22.9. Three mark questions. You need to know two facts. One of the facts is angle in a triangle adds up to 180 degrees. Okay. And another fact is if it's equilateral triangle, all the angles are 60 degrees okay so those are the two facts will get you two marks and getting the final answer will get you that last mark okay so here these are the equilateral triangle because of this bcd is an equilateral triangle so we get this angle is 60 degree the angle here is 60 degree and the angle there is 60 degree again even if you write it down on the diagram you still get mark okay so make sure don't keep it in your head write it down Whatever you need to do, write it down on the diagrams or write it down over here why you use 60 degrees. Because that 60 degree will get you one mark even if you don't do anything else. Now there's a two different ways we can do that. Okay, you can use this straight line here and work out this angle to be 120 degree. Because in the straight line angles add up to 180 degrees. Or and once you've done that, we can say it's x add 20 add 120. So I'm going to write that down. X add 20 add 120, which should be making 180 degree because that makes a triangle ABC here. Okay. So A to B is to C to back to A thus. So something at 20 at 120 will give you 180 degrees. So what we're going to do is that something has to be 40 degrees. Okay. Or you can add them up and then take away from 180. You will get X equal to 40 degree. Or another way you can look at it is the entire triangle A, C, D. Okay, so we go all the way this entire triangle. So we know this angle here is X. That angle there is 80 degrees. And this angle there is 60 degrees. 
when you add them up they add up to 180 degree as well so we need to do x is equal to 40y because 80 plus 60 add 40 will give you 180 degrees so there's a two different way we could have looked at this question here's the bar charts for how people book their holidays so the light gray one here this one is for under 30 these ones here is for 30 to 50 and then the black one here is for over 50. so two ways the booking are most popular for under 30 years old so i would say most popular bookings of computer and the next highest one is in person so those two are our answers we get <laughs> computer and in person and there's a two mark for that in total what percentage of 30 to 50 years old book in person or with an agent online give your answer to nearest 10 percent okay. so first we get the in person and agent online for 30 to 50 so that one is 17.5 percent and that one is 20 percent so once you read the values for 30 to 50 so that is which is the middle bar and then what you're going to do is add them up so you go 17.5 plus 20 that gives you 37.5 percent that will get you one mark because we've been asked to round it to nearest 10 percent so if you round that one to nearest 10 percent that would be 40 percent and that would get you your second mark so make sure you always read the questions carefully and answer it after you finish reading it don't start answering the question without completing the reading of the question make two comparison between of the data 30 to 50 so you need to compare 30 to 50 with 50 okay make sure you compare it you can't just make statement if you compare it that's the only time you will get marked so because it says here comparison as well so the first comparison i would make here actually you can look at it quite a few here and you can look at any one of those okay so I can look at a computer one saying, okay, over 50 years old have is a higher proportion or higher percentage of over 50 years old uh, book their holiday through computer. So you can see that, look, 45 and 52 or 51% of compared to 45 for 30 to 50. Similar things, you can use a phone example. There's only 10% of the uh, 30 to 50 booked uh, through the phone whereas 17.5% uh, booked uh, booked it through the phone for over 50 so make sure you're comparing the two values you can go on to other extreme whereas agent online the more percentage of the people booked it with agent online compared to 30 to 50 uh, 50s plus okay so you can use that one as well if you needed to so any two comparison will get you those two mags there are quite a few you can go through. <clears throat> Here's the game at school fair. 500 people play a game at the fair. The frequency tree shows some of those outcomes. Complete the frequency tree. So if we have a 500 people in total, 210 goes for a blue tub. So we have remaining 290. We're going for the red tub. And then out of those 210 we have 97 wins so obviously remaining 113 would lose the same thing here if we have only 19 people winning from the red tub then we have 271 people losing from the red tub okay. and if you do that frequency diagrams you would get two max so one max for any two of those correct player has one go at the game use the frequency tree to estimate the probability that the player wins so we have 90 uh, sorry 97 and 19 winning all together so we got 97 plus 19 that'll give you 116 winning 116 people winning out of 500 people who had a go at playing that game so that's the probability of winning the game Again, you can write the probability as a percentage, fractions, or decimals. Okay, but do not write probability as a ratio. Okay, otherwise you will not get any mark for that. 
All right, so if you even if you got the answer as a decimal or a fraction, you would have got the mark. Okay? So we could have had 23.2 percent or 0 0.232. As long as you got the answer in a, either one of these form, you would get full marks. There are between 20 to 30 students in a class. So the ratio of the left-handed to right-handed is 3 to 8. What does that mean? For every three left-handed students, there are eight right-handed students. Okay. So again, 3 doesn't go into 8 or 8 doesn't go into 3. So we cannot simplify it. That means whenever you have 11 students, for every 11 students, there are 3 left-handed and 8 right-handed. And we know that our number is between 20 to 30. So if you have another 11 student, that'll take you to 22 students. If you have another 11 student, that'll take you to 33 students. So we know that our numbers has to be between 10, sorry, 20 and 30. So that's the only number that's going to be between uh, 20 and 30. If you have two lots of three left-handed and eight right-handed. Okay, so if we have a six left-handed and 16 right-handed, and that will take you to this 22 student in the class. Cake shop makes 120 cakes and 720 donuts. Each person works eight hours a day and they either make cake or donuts. So if they make cakes, they make one person will make three cakes in one hour. So in eight hours, they'll make 24 cakes. And if they make uh, one hour, 30 donuts in one hour, so in eight hours, they will make 240 donuts. So when you do this calculation, you automatically get one mag, okay, or possibly two mags here if you did that. So one person would be making this much in a day. So we need to work out the minimum number of people needed for each day. Okay, so if I wanted to work out the minimum number of people, we need to make 120 cakes. So I would do 120 divided by 24. And again, you're using calculator. You don't have to use mental maths to do this. Okay, so that'll give you five people. So we need five people to make the 120 cakes working for eight hours. Okay, And then we do the same thing for the donuts. We have 720 donuts to make and one person can make 240 donuts. So when you do 720 divided by 240, that will give you three people. So overall, we need eight people working. Five people would be making cakes and three people would be making donuts. And that would be enough to make required amount each day. Second part, if shop makes some changes and the one person per hour now makes one more cake and 20% more donuts. Okay, So, and they sell the cakes for £4.80 and the donuts for 25p. Uh, how much money they'll be making or total sales, how much money they'll be making from total sales. So the manager did some calculations. So these are the calculations done by manager. So what we need to do is we need to correct any mis mistakes and write out the correct calculation in here. So it's four marks. So rather than finding the mistakes through that, I would completely ignore it right now. Okay. And I'm going to try and work out what we get by obviously looking at. So you one more cake means we used to make three cakes before that and now one more cake. So we're making four cakes per hour. So that's the correct calculation. And then sell of cake. So we're doing four times the price of the cake, which is £4.80. Again, we can put that in the calculator and we'll find out what would that cost us. Okay. So that'll cost us £19.20p. Okay. So that's the mistake there. And then making a donuts. If you're doing 20% more donuts, that means we used to make 30 now and we need to add the 20% of 30, which is 0 0.2 times 30. 20% is 0 0.2 multiplied by 30, we get 6. So now we're making 36 donuts. Okay. And the sale of donuts would be then 36. So there's a mistake there. There's two mistakes we found. Okay. So 36 
and multiply by 25p which is 0.25 pound if you calculate that in pounds we need to calculate this in pounds as well so we do 36 times 0.25 will give you nine pounds okay. so again there's a mistake there even if you do 50 times 25 that wouldn't give you 125 pound it'll give you 12 pound and 50p okay because this amount is given to you in pennies so total sale we get is 19.20 plus nine pound okay so we would get 28 pound and 20p again you're using calculator so you don't have to do that without calculator okay you can use calculator to work it out a square with the sides two times uh, sorry 2x is cut into two equal rectangles as below so if you had 2x by 2x that's a square both sides are same length and if you're cutting into two equal parts then we would get 2x by x because this 2x been cut into half so again remember this is 2x by x and now we need to read these statements and tell if it's true or false area of the rectangle is equal to x squared so let's work it out area of this rectangle here is going to be 2x that's the length multiplied by the height okay so 2x and we read the first statement saying area of the rectangle is equal to x squared is it true or false so we said 2x by x rectangle the area is going to be 2x multiplied by x now 2x means 2 times x multiplied by x so if you go back to the first question of this paper, I mean second question of this paper, we said 3 square means 3 times 3. So x times x will mean x square and multiplying it by 2 will give you 2 lots of x square. So area of the rectangle is actually 2x square and not just x square. So that is false. Perimeter of a rectangle is 6x. So you can go look through the perimeter. Perimeter is a length around the shape. So here the length around the shape is x, 2x, x, and 2x. So how many x's do we have if you go around the shape? 1x, 3x, 4x, 5x, and 6x. So yes, that is true. Area of the two rectangle, sorry, area of this square is 2 times the area of the rectangle. We have split that square into two rectangles, so that's true whatever the area of this square is going to be the area of this rectangle plus area of that rectangle that gives you two lots of rectangles which is four lots of x square two times two x square which is four lots of x square and that's correct diagonal of the square is equal to 2x so if that length is 2x and that length is 2x the diagonal going to be a lot longer than 2x okay so that's not correct that's false Again, if you're doing it, these questions and have no idea how to answer this question, then what you need to be looking to do is either uh, take all true or all false. Why? Because you've got a higher chance of getting more marks compared to if you just select randomly false and uh, true. If you take all trues and let's say every single one of them happen to be true, then you get full max. Otherwise, generally split between two correct and two wrong. Okay, so you will get two corrects and you will get one mark that way. Okay, so the way the examiner works, it will give you one mark at least. Okay, if it happens to be three to one, then you probably lose uh, all the marks. But then that would have happened if you just randomly selected it. But you got a higher chance higher probability of getting some max if you tick all of those correct or all of those wrong compared to if you randomly select it because if you select one wrong that means you're selecting two wrong so you already lost two max anyway perimeter of each rectangle is 27 centimeter work out the area of the square so if we know the perimeter which we said 6x is equal to 27 centimeter so we write that down 6x is equal to 27 centimeter so if you want to work out what 1x is you divide both sides by 6 so we get x is equal to 4.5 that will get you one mark now if you want to work out the area of the square we know the area of the square is 2x by 2x which is 4 lots of x squared okay so the area of the square is 4x squared so work out the area of the square. So all we're doing is replacing x with 4.5. So we're doing 4 times 
4.5 squared. Remember you need to do bit mass. So you need to do square first before you multiply it because we only took into the square x not 4. Okay? So you're doing 4 times 4.5 squared, put that in the calculator and you will get 81 centimeters squared and that would get you your accuracy mark. This is a formula that works out the tax you have to pay when you earn some money and this seems very realistic okay this is how much you will get tax free allowance so you don't have to pay any tax for first 12,570 according to this question which is similar to what we get as well you don't have to pay any tax for first 12,570 pounds so first roughly around 12 to 13 thousand pound you don't have to pay any tax now that would be slightly different for different people and depending on their circumstances okay. uh, so what we're saying t is the amount of the tax you're paying and e is the amount of the money you earn in pounds how much tax do you have to pay if you earn 24 thousand pound and this to my question for substitution so we're just going to put in that formula so t is equal to 0 0.2 so that's 20 percent E is 20, earning is 24,000 pound. If you earn 24,000, we're going to take away 12,570 from it and then multiplying it by 0 0.2 because that's a 20% bracket. Okay. So if you do that, first mark comes in again. All you have to do now, put the brackets in, put it in the calculator and we, you will get your answer. I need to find the answer quickly. Yeah, it's 11,430 11, for the bracket because remember even when you're multiplying it you do the bracket first bit mass and then multiply by 0 0.2 so 20% of 11,430 will give you 2,286 pounds okay that's how much tax you have to pay so if you got that first part you will get one mark and you get second mark for that what is the most you can earn without paying any tax? So that's the tax-free allowance. As soon as you have the earning going over 12,570, you will be paying 20% tax on that, okay? So most you can earn without paying any tax is 12,570. Alison pays 6,300 as tax. So we're gonna put that, replace T with 6,300. So 20%. And the earning, we don't know. We want to work out what the earning is. So we're going to try and figure it out, work out what E is using this. So if we got 0 0.2 is multiplied with this entire bracket here. So what we're going to do is divide both sides by 0 0.2. And if you divide 6,300 by 0 0.2, you will get 31,500. Which is earning take away 12,570 so see actually pays 20 percent tax on 31,500 but see also get this 12,570 tax free so solving equation we're going to have to add that on both side so when you add that on the both side this will give you zero so you're left with e and on the left hand side we will get 44,000 and 70 okay so she would be earning 44,070 pound before tax okay. so the inequality so if you're in my class we have looked at this a couple of weeks ago okay solving inequality is exactly same as solving equations all you have to do is instead of keeping the equal sign in the middle whatever the inequality signs have been given to you, you keep that in the middle. So if I wanted to solve this inequality, I need to get rid of this three first. So multiply both sides by three. And that will you multiply by three, divide by three. You left with two X, that'll give you th one. Okay, so one times two X is just two X. And this inequality sign will be copied down and four times three will give you 12. So now saying two times something is less than or equal to 12. So we're gonna do is divide both sides by two. So we get x, two x divided by two is one x. 
is less than or equal to 6. So what we're doing is this inequality sign, sign remains exactly the same. It's like you're using equal sign. So as long as x is less than or equal to 6, this 2x over 3 is always going to be always going to remain smaller than 4 as long as you're keeping your x less than or equal to 6. So the inequalities, so again, same thing. And again, if you're in my class, I'll say, remember one way of doing it so you don't have to remember a couple of other things. So first, I would ask everyone to multiply out the brackets. So four times x is 4x and four times one is four, which is greater than 12. So again, treat that inequality sign as just equal sign, okay? We take away four from both sides, why? To get rid of that add four. Add four, take away four gives you zero, so you're left with 4x and 4x is bigger than 8. Now divide both sides by 4, you're left with x, and x is bigger than 2. So x is more than 2, and x is less than 6. That's what we get. So that's 4 marks for those two simple inequality solving. Represent this, um, that satisfy, sorry, represent the solution set that satisfy both answers to part A and B in the number line. So A is x is less than or equal to 6. So if it's x is less than or equal to 6, we do the circle on the 6 and we shade it in. Why? Because that 6 is included, it's less than or equal to. And which side is less than or equal to 6? It's this side. So I'm going to put an arrow going that way. Okay. And then x is greater than 2. So we put a circle on 2. And again, this time we don't shade the circle because we're not including two in our solution. X has to be bigger, strictly bigger than two. So which side is bigger than two is this side. So I'm gonna put arrow going that way. And now the reason I joined it, because it needs to satisfy both. So our X has to be smaller than six or smaller than or equal to six or x has to be bigger than two. So x could be any number between these two points, okay? It could be 2.001, 2.0012 or 3.0000016, any number. And that's the reason we draw a line rather than telling you that x can be three, four, five, six, okay? Because it's not necessarily always going to be a whole number. It could go into really, really small decimal places. Now we got three friends, Amy, Ben, and Claire. They all go for jogging, and they, their distance or the which direction they go for jogging is given to you in bearing. So the Amy's bearings are 55 degrees. So if you start from north and go to Amy's path, that'll make 55 degree angle. That's how much they turn. And if you go to the next one, which is Ben, that'll make 150 degree angle. So if you go from, start from north and go to bend, that'll make 150 degree angle. And if you go all the way to Claire's, that makes 240 degree angles, okay? And they go, they're jogging at 10 kilometer per hour. So in one hour, they travel 20, 10 kilometers. That's the speed, 10 kilometer per hour, okay? So in, if they jog for one hour, they travel 10 kilometer. If they jog for half an hour, they will travel five kilometer. If they jog for 15 minutes, they'll travel 2.5 kilometer and so on, okay? So how long does it, does it take Ben to jog five kilometer? We just said it, so it takes 10 kilometer in 60 minutes. One hour means 60 minutes, okay? That means five kilometer, we're going from 10 to five by dividing by two. So we need to do the same thing, divide that side by two, and we'll get five kilometers in 30 minutes okay so it will take 30 minutes to jog five kilometers class says after one hour amy ben will have jogged 10 kilometer each 10 miles plus 10 miles equal to 20 miles so they are 20 miles apart okay correct the box if yes or no i would say no she is not correct why because she's saying here they jogging 10 kilometer each and see so added the distance in miles 10 miles is not same as 10 kilometer okay so what we're gonna do is gonna say no saying 10 miles is not equal to 10 kilometer and that's our reason okay and even if they turn 10 miles and 10 miles gone they're not going completely opposite direction okay even if you use it kilometers 
that it doesn't make 180 degrees so that distance not necessarily going to be 20 kilometers okay right who is closer to ben after one hour so if you look at one after one hour so one hour they would have gone 10 kilometer in either direction all of them but we need to look at it ben so what's the angle between ben and amy so from 55 to 150 that would be 95 degree if you do 150 take away 55 that'll give you 95 degrees okay so the angle between amy and ben would be 95 degree now what's the angle between ben and claire so from 150 to 240 so we don't do 240 take away 150 that'll give me 90 degree so we're saying Claire is at 90 degree. Okay. So Claire is at 90 degree and Amy is at 95 degree. Okay. So who's closer to? So obviously the 95 degree is slightly wider. So that's going to take up further away. They all travel 10 kilometers anyway. And so the Claire would be closer to uh, Ben. And again, th this is the reason. The this angle between the Claire and Ben is smaller than the angle between the Ben and Amy. Similar distances, we're changing and converting things. So conversion is given to us. One mile is 15,280 feet. And we need to show that one mile is approximately 1,600 meters. So if you, anytime you have to show something, what we're going to do, we're going to start doing it, trying to work it out, how we're going to, what one mile is in meters, okay? And it says approximately, so you can round that number after. But we're going to try and work out what one mile is, okay? So we know one mile is 5,280 feet. Then we're going to change that feet into inches by multiplying by 12. Because if you're going from 1 to 12, we multiply by 12. So we're going to multiply that by 12, and we will get something around 16,000, 63,380. 63,380 inches. And then we can change inches into centimeter. And again, look, from inch to centimeter, we're multiplying by 2.54. Why? Because one inch goes to 2.54 centimeters. So when you go from inch to centimeter, we're multiplying by 2.54. To do that, we will get 160,934, roughly a centimeter. Now, what we got is in centimeters. So we can change centimeters into meter by looking at this. One meter is equal to 100 centimeters. So when you go from meter to centimeter, we multiply by 100. And so that means if you go from centimeter to meter, we divide by 100. Why? Because 100 to 1, you need to divide by 100. So I need to change 160,934 by 100 to get 1609.34 meter that is approximately 1600 meter if you round it to two significant figure okay so that would be approximately 1600 meter if you round it to nearest 100 meter so that's what we needed to do to prove that this one is slightly tricky question. Why? Because you've been given the three different choices. Okay, so you need to work out each one of those and the mixer of those things as well. So you can actually find, find trying to buy 24 cans few different ways. I can buy 24 single cans. I can buy um, two lots of these and then two lots of these and two singles. Whichever way you want to buy it, basically, or three singles, you can buy so many different ways. So first, we're just going to buy, if you want to buy it, 24 cans. And if you can buy it, with just using the same one, what would it cost you? So first one, if you, let's say, buy a single can, what would it cost you? So it's going to cost you £1.20 multiplied by 24. Okay. So you just put that in the calculator and see what would you get. 
So I'm doing 24 times 1.2. So that'll give cost you 28 pound and 80 pence. 28 pound and 80 pence. So that's really pricey. Let's say if we want to buy this one. So if you're buying a packs of four, and if you buy two packs of four, that's eight cans. You can get eight cans for eight six fifty. So we need to buy three lots of six fifty. So we're doing three times six fifty, and that will give you nineteen pound and fifty pence. Okay, that's a lot cheaper than the first method. And third one, if you buy a pack of six, it'll cost you five pound. So we need to buy four lots of pack of six so we need to multiply five by four and that'll cost you 20 pound so you need to show all this working out to get three max every time you do this working out they will get one mic there's a combination you can do but obviously if this is cheaper to buy compared to that then we're gonna use stick to that one so we're just gonna buy uh, six packs of four because you get discount when you buy two packs of four okay so we have a total cost going to be 19 pound 50p and you end up buying six packs of four okay and that'll get you your fourth mic when you're trying to work out what that is uh, work out the volume of sphere when the radius is six and that's a formula that's been given to us okay so we don't have to worry about it now the new format they will give you formula sheets and these one would be given to you in the formula sheets if they're not in the exam paper okay so make sure you look out for the formula sheets when you need to work out the volume of sphere if the radius is six all we're doing is replacing r in the formula by six so we need to do six cube which is 216 so we're doing four third pi multiplied by 216 so when you do that We will get 864 over 3 pi. It doesn't say anything about simplifying your answer, or you just have to leave your answer as it is. Okay, 864 over 3 pi centimeter cube, because we're looking at the volume. So if they ask you to state the correct unit, it would be centimeter cubes. Then four of these spheres are packed tightly into the cuboid as shown. So work out the volume of the cuboid. So we need to work out the height, length, and the width of the uh, cuboid. So if we know these are the sphere with the radius six centimeter, that means the diameter is going to be 12. Okay, so diameter is going to be 12 that way as well. So we know this length here, that's 12, and we know the height, of that cube is also 12 and if you know the they are tightly packed there is no gap between them so that's 12 that's going to be 12 another 12 and another 12 so we got four lots of 12 that will make up 48 as a width of that cuboid so if you want to work out the volume we work out the area of the cross section which could be 48 times 12 and then multiply by the depth, which is also 12. Okay, so 48 times 12 times 12 will give you the volume of that cuboid, 6,912. 6,912. And again, if you want to work out the uh, units, it would be centimeter by centimeter by centimeter cubed. So there's not a lot of working out, but what I'm done in terms of the working out. Trying to work out that the length and the height would be 12, get you max. Trying to work out the, the width would be 48, will get you max. And then just putting them sum together, that gets you max, and the final answer will get you one max as well. Here's two parts of the same type of paper. Each sheet weighs 5 grams and the total piles weigh 7.5 kilogram. Okay, so we need to do the first thing, I would look at it, because there is a gram there and the kilogram there, so I'm gonna do change 7.5 kilogram into 7,500 gram. Okay, there's a one kilogram is equal to 1,000 gram. 
okay so with this would you should have to turn it around okay and then saying okay work out the number of sheets of paper on the shorter pile so we let's work out the number of uh, sheets of paper on the larger pile and then we use this ratio to work out the number of paper there are in the shorter pile so the larger pile would be 7500 grams so we need to divide it by 5 grams okay because every sheet weighs 5 grams so 7500 divided by 5 that gives me 1500 so there are 1500 sheets of paper in the larger pile okay so now we know the larger one weighs uh, 7.5 kilogram which is going from 5 to 7.5 I'm multiplying it by 1.5 so I need to do the same thing I need to multiply 3 by 1.5 as well that gives me 4.5 kilograms so the shorter pile should weigh 4.5 kilogram because if they are in the same ratio this ratio here then height would be similar as well because the papers are exactly the same way five gram so they would the shorter pile will weigh 4.5 kilograms so what we need to do is do this 4.5 kilogram which is 4500 grams and divided by five grams will tell you that would be 900 sheets 4500 divided by 5 will give you 900 sheets of paper in the shorter pile okay so that's what we needed to do to work out now so again if you work out the 1500 which is the sheets in the larger pile and the user ratio to get the 4.5 kilogram weight of the shorter pile the second mic and the third mic will get you that 900 four triangles which two triangles are congruent congruent means exactly the same identical triangle okay two things are exactly the same then they are congruent means it's the same length and the same angles So if it has the same length and same angle, those two triangles are congruent, exactly the same. So there are four conditions that we can use. One of those conditions is the angle, side, angle. If the two angles and the side included are the same, then there is no other triangle you can make because the third angle would be exactly the same and that sides between these two angles would be the same as well in both triangles. Another one you can look at it as a two sides and the angle between them is the same then that triangle has to be exactly the same okay and if you look at all three sides are exactly the same then obviously that's the only way you can make that triangle and then the last one is a right angle hypotenuse and one of the shorter side so we need to decide on one of those conditions that's what they mean by give a reason for your answer okay so here what we're looking at is this triangle here has got the two angles and the side in between which is 5 30 and 65 you can always try to work out the third angle if you got the other sides that's been given to you so you know this connection between 65 and 85 and 3 there might be a connection between them as well so that would be 85 because the angle in a triangle always adds up to 180 the same thing here that would be 85 I can't work out the missing angle here or the side so I'll have to leave L alone this one here is going to be 85 as well but look this one the angle aside between these two angles 65 and 85 is 5 so we can't compare that with any one of those two right because the sides that 5 is between 65 and 30 not 65 and 85 okay so this one it's got 30 and 65 side between them is 5 65 and 30 side between them is 5 so we know j and k are congruent triangle and the reason for it because the angle side angle both have the ang one angle two angles and the side between them exactly the same okay therefore these two triangles are congruent last one describe the fully the single transformation that maps a to triangle b so that a is our objects 
and B is our image. So we're going from A to B. And if you're describing transformations, there are four different type of transformation. We have, a, we have enlargement, rotation, reflection, and translation. As long as it's one of those, you need to state which one of those transformation is that. So here, if the two uh, shapes, objects and image, are not the same size, then we know it's an enlargement. One is bigger or smaller than the other, then it's an enlargement. And that will get you one mic by defining what type of transformation it is. So that's your first mic. And then the, if you know it's an enlargement, then we need to know what the scale factor is. So how many times you're making it bigger, that'll get you second mic. So scale factor. Here, so if you look at the, compare the same corresponding lens. So that length there is two, and that length there is six. So we can say it's going from two to six, so the scale factor is three, or you can use the calculation, the length on the image divided by length on the objects, which gives you the scale factor. So six divided by two will give you scale factor, that's three. So you're making it three times bigger. So that's your second mic. And then we're looking at the center. If it's an enlargement, it has to be enlarged from some one of the points, okay? So it's like you holding a torch, where you where you holding a torch to see the shadow on the image, basically. So to do that, we can join the corresponding point. So that point on the image is exactly the same on the objects here. So if we join them together, they go through three here. That's one of the points. And then just this point here on the image and that points on the object so you can join them together. And they go through the point and that's three zero. The center would be three on the X axis and zero on the Y axis. So that will get you your third mic. And that's all we needed to do. So if you really like the video and if you found it useful, so give it a like and subscribe to see uh, whenever I upload a new paper, you will get this notification on your thing. So you can go through the same paper or similar paper with me again. Okay. Thank you for watching the video.